it's starting off we getting facts that you know we didn't know about so i always like that and it looks like we are just rolling right along too we have um our next guest in the backstage coming all the way this morning from pakistan um and i'm so excited to bring her up because she has hi anila how are you she does so much work. I'm good. Um, good. Oh, she does so much work in her community. I mean, just every day I'm seeing videos of her in one event or another doing so much work. Just, I mean, you can't keep her down. Let's just put it that way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here's one of our true superstars of the world doing amazing, amazing Hi, things. Hi, Hello, Anila. Sounds like we have a little bit of lag. Hi, on Tom. Your... Hi. Hi, Neela. Hi. I'm connected with Tom on my, uh, I think on Facebook. Oh, wonderful. I love that. Yep. So should too. I come from my mobile phone or laptop is fine? Darn. You know, is there, Jeff, do you, is there a lag in, in the sound or is it just on my end? Maybe it's my own internet. No, your internet's good. So. Yeah, okay. your, your internet is good. I'm experiencing the lag a little bit too. Yeah, I don't, the lag might not be an issue during the presentation, just you. while you're interacting. Okay, that makes okay. sense because we're all up at the same time. Party. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh. oh, and we lost her. We lost Tricky. her. Tricky thing. Tom, do you I have know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's flipping between her cell phone and her laptop. So I think she's going to try her laptop next. She said okay. that she was having, she told me that that might be something that she might have a little bit of trouble with. So okay. that makes sense. Oh my gosh. That's so great that you connected with her, Tom. Yeah. She, um, she added me on Facebook and I, I, like I said, I'm intrigued and the things she does, it's amazing. But again, this is what yeah. this is about. It's bringing great minds together, isn't it? Uh, in all yeah. across the world. What amazing ability that we're able to do that. And 40 years ago, we couldn't. Oh, so I was even born no. 40 years ago. So I don't know if you can <laughs> Some of us were, but we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, it was like, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in first grade. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I was already reading books to Tom while he was a babe. <laughs> 1993. Oh my great. I was almost graduating high school by then, okay? I know. Sarah and I are about the what same age. I'm like, what's happening? Oh, you look great, guys. You look great. I call it leveling up. It, I don't yeah, call right, it aging. Right? It's leveling up, right? There we go. There we go. I like that. <laughs> leveling Every up. Every year is an experience. Small practice. Yes. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Getting better and better, right? Like a fine wine over here. <laughs> Go gracefully. <laughs> oh, oh, like exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you've been doing lots of world traveling, Mr. Tom. I see you. I see you traveling to those neat places. Yeah, and that's just that's a bit of downtime. And I would love to travel to do what I do here. Um, which obviously I've just said to you, Sarah, didn't I? Is I do obviously a lot of stuff around the community of where I'm from and in other locations in in the UK, in England. I would love to go to other places because it'd be great to meet other people and meet other um, children. I'm in the middle of creating loads of resources at the moment for young people to also help them through that as well and parents because I think it's very important for parents to be able to have tools as well because it's very hard for them as well. So I don't I see children from a holistic point of view that it's not just them, it's home, it's school, it's many angles and and having that superpower of the brain of having ADHD, I'm able to see it from multiple angles. And don't just see it from one point because in England we have obviously motorways. Um, if life was so easy, all the houses and the shops would be on one motorway, but we don't. <laughs> we, have, we have windy roads, so life is always windy sometimes. So we need to be able to <laughs> be able to feel that windiness and then be able to come out of it. So it's important 
this is why I want to go to other places. Mm -hmm. I, I'm That's still that. I'm still hyper focused on your bus, your mental health bus. I can't get off of the idea and how brilliant I think that is. Cool. I think it's what I love thing. about it. Yes. And the thing that I think draws me to it the most is that I can just imagine how it makes kids feel when they enter this bus. We talk a lot about environment and how that can affect a neurodivergent child. And I think what a great environment for these kids to be able to step into and take them maybe out of their own world for just a few minutes, however yeah. that long that is. Exactly. And that's why the color is important when you walk in as well. You get a lot of blue tones because it's calm and it's relaxing. The bus mm -hmm. was red before yeah. it was on the outside, but I changed mm -hmm. the whole color of the, the red and wrapped it white. Um, you so, wrapped it? Yeah. Oh, you did. You did it right. <laughs> yeah, right. It's proper right. I can obviously uh, let uh, Anila talk now, but I can go on to it because we've had a little bit of a um we've rebuilt the bus back because it had a massive water leak i don't know if you've seen um yeah. sarah it's it's yeah it's, it was pretty destroyed but it's back yeah. it's building so let the amazing yes. anila chat and i'll come yes. back in a bit i love it it love looks it. like anila is is ready to rock and roll yeah yeah we're we got her we got her back there let's bring her back up and let's oh see. well well maybe we're working oh here she comes I am I'm, I'm, I'm live from a laptop and my mobile phone at the same time. You know, you need to be you need to be a little bit technology smart. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Anila, you know what I'm doing. You, I'm back from my laptop also. <laughs> since you are on and ready, and we've already gone a couple minutes into your time, I'm going to let you take over. And when you are done, we'll come back up and chat with you. Okay, so let me, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'm never anxious, by the way. No, no, it's not reality. You know, being autistic and being a neurodivergent person, that's not right, that you're not anxious. Uh, I have done my rituals already. So why I choose this topic uh, with the name of autism and intersectionality is because uh, I have been uh, working on and reaching out to the community since 2018. And uh, I just find it out that there could be something which as a because I, I'm, I belong to a third world country, by the way, I'm, I'm in Pakistan right now. And uh, uh, what I felt over here when I was working, like I, I started in 2018, uh, not sorry, 2018, I started in 2011, like with autistic children. And there was ADHD too, and there was other uh, disabilities too. So I always find it different that whenever you work with a uh, with different disability, you need a different approach. Uh, at that time, I was just very young and I didn't have the idea that what to do, how to do that, and what are the terminology about that, because I was just a fresh, fresh graduate and we just studied about in DSM about those things. So my first day, my first job was with autistic children and at that time, I did not know about myself. So uh, later on, I reached out to the communities because uh, uh, somehow people think that when you go to abroad you have better opportunities to work with you have better opportunities to you know get along uh, work with and uh, you have better opportunities for treatment options so i thought why not not let's try other world and let's see that how it's going to work for us as a community so that's the reason that i reach out to brown black and white community which i will describe later on and i will give you my introduction later on so can you please change the slide Yes, so I'm a clinical psychologist, but basically a psychologist, psychotherapist. Then later on, I become speech, therap speech and language therapist, and I'm a trainer. And I was working for, uh, actually, I was working as a social activist, and I was working for human rights, actually. But uh, when I started to have the different level of insight about the disorder, the disability, I decided that why not I start working as a disability advocate. And uh, this, that's how I did, did that. and. Uh, like I'm a neurodivergent therapist, and uh, uh, I'm not just working for my own community, not just in Pakistan. I'm working in other country, uh, communities too. And uh, I also work with third world, far, far reach countries where I have to. Uh, I, th I think this is the part of my next uh, last time um, uh, autism uh, month. Uh, it, it is over there where I just talked about how I work, I, how, how I work about with those communities and how I reach those communities. So I remember there was one uh, uh, which I always remember will be. I use uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp messages to communicate with those uh, individuals because they didn't have their uh, internet option. So this is what I did. So 
Uh, can you please uh, change the slide? So uh, these are some of my project that I'm doing and uh, why I'm telling about that because to give people the idea that how I am and how they can reach out to those organizations too. And how they, they can work on a global perspective because now I feel that we have to, when we talk about a global perspective of something, we have to go and work on different level. We have to understand because there's something into that too. Uh, since we the world is a global village, so people are coming and going from one country to other country, and there are a lot of Pakistani out there who need support, who don't know what to do, and there are other countries and other regions too, which don't even understand what autism is. Still, they are they are taking uh, autism as a uh, intellectual disability. Uh, uh, I know that people, certain autistic uh, individual, could have intellectual or challenges, but uh, that is always not the reality about that. So they are different. We have to consider it different, and since it's it's diverse and we have diverse brain so we have to have different approach so for that we have to have different uh, you could say that different organization working together for one common goal that is uh, working for neurodivergent community individuals all around the world and, and one of the example is uh, this summit uh, autism summit uh, that is a result of years of years of working and uh, understanding different things so one is sound of what is it that then that I'm working with the next is recurring from childhood abuse and trauma but I'm specifically also uh, looking for the ways that how we can or how and when we can uh, see the perspective of abuse coming from and specifically I uh, cover the aspect of sexual abuse too and also we talk about autistic girls and uh, the girls who are on ADHD sometimes uh, they are the prime suspect of many abuse because there's a the, there's the level of selective mutism that come out, not selective I would call, call it a situation mutism which uh, which is a trauma response so they, are, they, they don't know how to say no or they feel it like they are traumatizing that situation they cannot say what they cannot understand what to do at that moment so there is another uh, organization which i recently joined and there's something else which i will uh, i did not disclose yet uh, but it is a, a very important uh, work for me so that is about trauma and that will be a global perspective and then there's, there's the community and the community where again i am reaching out to different people and just to understand differently because i think that when you uh, meet one person you meet one person you win one, one autistic person. It does not mean it doesn't mean that you know every autistic individual. So since I'm a, I'm a therapist, I'm a, I'm a professional too. This is the need of my work also to understand each and everything. And I think I, my brain is a curious brain. You can see the work that I'm doing. So it's it's a very curious brain. So I need to know a lot. And I think still now I I know nothing about autism. I need to know a lot, a lot, a lot to help out the people. So that is my goal actually. So there's, uh, uh, I'm running uh, support groups and this Spectrum Talks and Tips International is actually a podcast that I'm doing and uh, I have been, I have been privileged to, you could say that, to meet a lot of amazing people, amazing autistic people all around the world. And um, I'm just trying to uh, understand again that how with having autism, how they overcome those things, how they overcome those challenging and yet they're doing very great in their life. So it's all about that. Then uh, Global Alliance is my own uh, initiative. Then there's a, another app, Lisa app, which is uh, which where I'm working with um, brown communities, actually. Brown in include Asian community. And uh, I will talk about my uh, uh, support groups in the next slide. Uh, can you please change the slide? Yes. So these are my support group. One is for parental support group. That is Andy, for ND Andy adult. And also, also for some, some of them are for mental health, too. So one is the Bridges, Bridges Global Support group for autistic adult why I'm mentioning that because that is a free resource for people around the world those who understand English who can speak English so they are always welcome it's a weekly thing and we have been we just celebrated its it anniversary so we are going live uh, you could say that uh, we are doing weekly uh, every week we are coming together to have that discussion to have uh, what we understand what our problems and I'm glad that we are doing that for one year now onward and that is a very regular thing. I'm so happy about that. The next one is uh, about, uh, you could say that it's about, uh, it's, it's a local community groups. It's for Pakistani that we try to make it over here. That uh, since in our country, still people think that autism is a condition that is a childhood condition. So they think that after 18, it just go away. So I just want to uh, clarify that confusion of the people. So it's, it doesn't go away. You have to have different resources for that. And one of the reason me reaching out to the other uh, world uh, first world countries was that how i can build those resources for my own people and uh, 
people is all about that then i'm also working with uh, with the parents uh, to have the different uh, it's all it's all about creating resources so i'm not just creating for myself but i also want other people to join those things too and uh, the other thing is that all those resources are free so anybody can access those resources and uh, i just uh, want people to have support as much as they can so please uh, can you change the slide Okay, so why uh, intersectionality is like I told you that I have uh, uh, get a chance to work with black, white, black, black and brown communities, and uh, um, I learned a lot from that. Them. So uh, it gives me the idea that whenever we are diagnosing autistic individuals, either it's children or either either, either either it's adult, we have to have the understanding that either the symptoms that those children have or those adults have is it a part of their culture, or is it a part of uh, Uh, them being uh, raised by uh, uh, raised differently let's say so that was one of my uh, that's one of my uh, interest in that that sometimes for example i belong to a culture which is very loud culture and uh, we just say what we do and we just don't repeat our things and uh, we are hyper by nature so uh, uh, or you could say that there are so many we follow the routines and things like that so that is one of our, uh, interesting thing when you uh, you are a professional that you have to have the idea when you are diagnosing because uh, right now i believe that autism is the most uh, sometime i feel that it's under diagnosed or uh, over diagnosed or maybe it become a commercial term too uh, people can disagree with what i'm saying right now but uh, since it is uh, i feel it like that so uh, i think with this reason we need to have a more understanding of uh, autism because before we are, we we have to have the understanding that when you are we are diagnosing some uh, someone uh it's it's it it will leave them for for the whole life so we have to be careful with those things so intersectionality is a concept understanding how aspect of personality uh continue to create differences in multiple uh region uh, disability with age and gender things like that uh so uh, i will talk about this later on because i have different aspect uh, which i will try to cover during this presentation so people get the idea that uh, uh from what from when i'm talking about intersectionality what i mean actually and uh, people can have their own definitions too uh, so they can differ with the thing that i'm saying uh, so this is what, what i'm trying to say uh, i don't know maybe as an autistic person you have to give a lot of explanation because people think that and people have been making you wrong so many times so i think this needs to go from uh, things okay can you please change the slide or did you change the slide already uh, please change the slide okay so uh, it's the frame of understanding because lack of understanding of intersectionality is again because you know people who came from who who are going from our countries uh, asian country to european countries or you know uk or us they are still facing difficulty because uh, people are not open about telling the people that uh, uh, our and uh, there's something else into, into that too a lot of children get diagnosed in uk and us and they are coming back to our countries like they are coming to uh, bangladesh they are coming to india they are coming to pakistan and they are hiding that fact and over here whenever you uh, uh, you just uh, tell them that uh, the child have certain issues let's say, or child is having certain kind of certain kind of difficulty uh, they are just saying that no uh, we were living in different culture and the culture was isolated culture and now we came to pakistan and now when people will be here the child will communicate with other people and it is going to get uh, you could say that it is going to get you know uh, easier for the child to do those things so so it, it's something like that so uh, we have to clear those confusion also uh, and uh, okay next uh, can you please uh, change the slide okay so uh, according to my understanding uh, i don't again i'm saying that uh, people can differ with that too and uh, because uh, it's 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 a uh, this kind of age i mean whenever you talk about yourself people get offended from that too and i don't understand that uh, because you are talking about yourself how can people get offended from that uh, because you're not saying them to anything you know you're not pointing out anything but still they do that and remember um, i remember many times whenever i'm talking about uh, neurodivergent i just specifically mentioned that i am talking about autism and adhd at the moment i'm not addressing other people uh, because there are so many things and so many things are combining and things are getting confusing for many people so uh, i just uh, okay so autism in white community uh, uh, autism in black community autism in brown community so this is how i try to uh, section things in my head and uh, 
Yeah, can you please change the slide? Okay, so when we talk about diagnosis and services, so uh, like since we are living in a global world, and when people go from our countries, like this is a brown culture, like brown communities, our here parenting is very different. Families are different, and they are very interlinked with each other. In, in terms of anybody can come and say anything to you about your child, and uh, there there are not specific boundaries. And uh, yet I know uh, people have been uh, pointing out mothers specifically that you are not not a good mother actually you don't, don't know how to uh, work with kids you don't know how to raise kids so when they go abroad and uh, um, uh, just because certain is let's say for example i belong to a very uh, i uh, i grew up in a you could say that i grew up in a in joint family system you know so a lot of things have been covered during that phase also like uh, socialization because i used to play with kids a lot so socialization aspect covered in that language cover also covered in that as because you learn a lot with your own uh, with children of your own age so that aspect was covered so if i would have been isolated my my life would be different from those people who are on spectrum let's say so that's also happening when and they think that people who came from brown culture to white culture think that if we uh, the child is having certain issues let's say the child is not able to communicate it's because the child go from joint family system to isolation 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 and uh, they're just one single unit families and mother and father both have to work so that is why it is important to understand the culture background specifically in diagnosis also and and uh, since uh, uh, people are uh, going from our countries they don't even have the idea uh, uh, like uh, with people with brown culture and black culture they don't have the idea that uh, how to go for disability certificate and how to have those um, uh, you know those uh, assessment process and how to diagnose their child because since they think that uh, it, uh, the child is being naughty the child is uh, missing the family the child is missing the parents so they just uh, they don't understand the idea that uh, uh, when we're talking about services and we're talking about early intervention early intervention is very important for uh, covering the bad gap between the children and the gap between the uh, skills which is required or which is uh, which is uh, you know there's a term in our uh, uh, when we're talking about new therapies that is age appropriate activities so which is defined by cultures too so one culture to other cult culture could be a shock too and one culture to other culture could be a uh, you know discrimination they could face uh, and they are facing discrimination a lot and i'm also not saying that this is not happening with white people anywhere this is what i feel and this is how i communicate it and i get to know or get this idea or i feel that anywhere those who, who the kids and the adults who have those needs who have different needs who are on spectrum who are neurodivergent they 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 face discrimination in any way one way or other way around it's in the job it's in the uh, you know it's it's for the job it's for the you know pay and uh, if downsizing is happening i remember last year it was happening and uh, I have at least my 10 to 15 autistic friends. I'm talking about all around the world. They lo lost their job. So they were the first one to get target of that. So uh, that's uh, the diagnosing and services things uh, that uh, anyway, they're, they're going to uh, face a problem because of uh, them being neurodivergent, because of them being not able to advocate for themselves. Like it's, it's, it's kind of a thing. So can you please change the slide? Now, gender difference and services over here too. Why I'm uh, talking about that? Because it's a thing in white and black culture also. It could be a thing in white, uh, in brown and black culture. But it could be a thing in white culture too. That uh, a, a son is, a son is, uh, if you have a child, a male child, uh, they think that uh, the child is going to be uh, a bread earner of the family. He's going to make a family, and he's going to uh, run the economics of the family too. So they are putting more money on that child they are willing to take services for that child and they're willing to take uh you could say that uh they're willing to take any kind of chances and they will take them to anywhere even they will change the country because of those child because of that child because he's a male child and there's the whole uh you know scenario about uh, economic uh thing is attached with that child so this is what they do and if it's a male child the child is getting more uh the child is more privileged in getting any kind of services and I'm saying this because uh, if you talk about the criteria, the diagnostic criteria, I think there, are, there have been many researches on that right now, that uh, uh, the criteria is kind of a boyish criteria. 
because for girls uh, there will be always a dif gender difference in the uh, terms of uh, the diagnosis because in girls autism present represent itself differently and boy it represent differently so if a girl is uh, like this is happening in our culture a lot and i have seen that it happened in black culture too that uh, if a girl is not talk talking and the girl is dependable to on their parents and uh, she just don't want to go or she want to stay with their parents and there's something else into that too not just culture but also religions in religion is playing a lot of role in that that we don't want our women to be uh, speaking up for themselves we, we just want them to uh, stay quiet and not um, uh, not you know saying something about if something happened to them it it, it include abuse too why people are not uh, coming out of those abusive relations is, is one of the, the reason is and again when i was uh, talking about that i i specifically mentioned that girls are uh, more uh, susceptible to any form of abuse because they don't know how to talk about that it's not that they don't know but you know that selective mutism uh, or situation mutism in coming in that so they don't know how to or they they find it difficult to reach out to people or they find it difficult to take any kind of a help because in childhood uh, you were alone you were left alone you were left alone by your family you were left alone by your uh, friends maybe not intentionally let's say but uh, there's a thing about that that's a sad reality about um, this but uh, it's, it's like that so that's for gender difference and services uh, from this i mean reaching out to services and uh, again um, if there's any kind of a summer camp any kind of thing that is happening in another city then girl will not go boy will go even um, uh, uh, if, if we talk about the education system if we talk about the uh, you know uh, services uh, it's about like uh, they will uh, if let me tell you something if i'm talking working with 10 autistic people i'm talking about people uh eight of them are boys one or two are girls with uh, with uh, like i'm also working with adults so with adults the ratio is, is different now so if we talk about teenagers uh, from uh, 15 to 21 22 23 before 30 i have more girls than boys so it's a different thing that's why I, I am interested in that topic because the boy shouldn't be you know sharing his problem his burden with anyone and he he have to man up that's why he's not coming to us and the girl somehow one way or other way she's coming to me because of so many reason and uh, that's the interesting part of that so can you please change the slide okay so now professional choices why i said that uh when we talk about uh because everything is coming from uh identifying a child or adult with on uh, on spectrum and uh, with or, or autism spectrum condition and taking any kind of a help or professional choices that you can make sometime we choose a, a profession which is aligned with ourselves so a man have a lot of professional choices a girl don't have professional choices that much a girl have to have stay in a you know in a very traumatic in, uh, household and she have to go out and then work too and sometimes it get very overwhelmed for that girl but when you talk about the boys uh, they are more like you know uh, if uh, they can go to in a, in a uh, uh, like uh, there are, i know a lot of my friends who are musician who are uh, good in art like they are doing one way or the way art then they are doing uh, music so they have a lot of avenues or you could say that them being a a man have uh, you know uh, maybe uh, the you could say that the uh, the profession for example engineering doing something with computer languages so those are the things where a lot of boys are going and girls uh, have very limited choices so they are just staying with maybe teaching and those uh, maybe uh, some other five choice even if uh, the world is a global player space let's say and we have uh, came from uh, you could say that uh, like uh, it's a you know a 21st century even then people still have that thinking they still have those problems they still have those thought patterns that uh, again if uh, uh, the girl is not uh, you could say that if the girl is uh, you know having some kind of dependability on the family they still uh, want uh, uh, her to maybe stay at home they don't want her to go out and uh, i remember um, one of my client uh, she was very amazing she was very pretty beautiful educated very well educated and her family just because she was on spectrum and she has uh, you know, some form of adhd too uh, and she was taking some kind of a medication because again she was wrongly diagnosed actually and just because of taking medication her condition was very worse her mother want her to be married to some guy and they just want to you know uh, give them any everything so it was more like instead of she practicing what she is doing uh, her parents choose her to be uh, staying with a man 
instead of you know uh, pursuing her career so that is something like that uh, can please uh, change the slide okay so next is family structure okay so the so the family structure is single joint single parent and uh, foster home i remember when i started reaching out to uh, community i i used to have uh, a lot of discussions and there was one of women who did her did her phd actually and it was about uh, autistic uh, it was about neurodivergent kid by the way and uh, her uh, conclusion of her research was those people those parent uh, or the parent who have a child on spectrum or who have you know a, a neurodivergent kid the ratio of divorce divorce is more in those parents and it's not just happening in maybe you could say that uh, from uh, happening in uh, white or black or brown communities it's like it's it's a thing it it, it, it is happening because of so many reasons a woman have to uh, take care of the child sometimes i have seen parent, uh, single parent also taking care of the child so uh, it's always about if a woman is doing this as a single parent or a father is doing that as a uh, as a single parent it is it is getting very difficult for that father to do that and now uh, i have seen that also that a lot of parents are very scared to take their child to uh, for the diagnosis and the reason for that is they think that social uh, service is going to take care, uh, take away the, the the children from them uh, so uh, that is a thing so if uh, the child is in a single family unit uh, the child is getting more uh, will be facing more problem because uh in terms of uh, not just taking services but with the child is coming back and the child is again alone you know and uh, uh him being on spectrum him or her being on spectrum and uh, uh taking services difficulty in taking services and uh, uh not just taking services but you know going for education proper education and uh, since we don't have that uh, uh still we don't have good uh, inclusive setups around the world uh, you could that they, if there are some good setups they are very far away like you have to maybe travel one hour or two hour over there and um, since uh, if you go to the system for the diagnosis then uh, one thing is it's very expensive if you do go towards the private sector i mean you go towards the other sector uh, that include uh, government sector then you have to wait for one or two years and uh, when we talk about children it's important to have things on uh, timely things actually you know because we have to go for early intervention so family structure is important and uh, uh giving them the identity because you know when uh, a woman is if it's a single parent and she's going out for work also and at the uh, when the child is asking question a lot of question about the identity about having a neurodivergent identity about, about having him or her uh, uh, autistic person who is going to counsel that child you know so the family structure is uh, somehow maybe it could make situation worse for a child it could make situation good for a child too so all those things are contributing in him getting frustrated and also getting support so it's important to have that understanding of that thing also and uh, i think people before even going to um, look toward the socialization aspects you know and for job and other aspect they have to see the aspect of their family too to have the support too uh, can you please change the slide okay so the aspect of the relationships um i have seen uh, there are many dating site right now and there are certain uh, uh, dating site which are uh, you know uh, safe they are saying that they are safe for autistic people but what i feel or what i believe is um, autistic individual if you look toward the, them and we have a let's say online thing which we have a virtual reality over here people are using those uh, dating apps and uh, doing those things uh, again i would say that uh, this is what i believe and uh, it could maybe uh, you know uh, people could maybe differ to that too that uh, autistic individuals still are at the you could say at uh, they are vulnerable population actually because uh, again if you are in front of someone maybe you can say something about that but somebody is behind the camera behind the laptop you don't know what it, what that person is and they don't uh, get the idea i'm talking on the from the perspective of parents too that they don't know what they where their child and ch child children are talking to and this is the reason for a lot of abduction a lot of abduction have been happening because of that reason 
uh, it also includes sex, sex trafficking. It also includes children getting uh, um, abused online. Children getting, you could say that, uh, uh, not just uh, getting abused, but also getting a lot of traumatized uh, experiences from online and people are blackmailing them too. So that is an important aspect too. So the personal life, uh, the family life, the friendship and the partner, I think people still have uh, not don't no idea because uh, 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 work have been happening on that. But uh, uh, person uh, the personal life of the person uh, uh, is still because you know uh, I'm working with some people. Okay, just a minute. Am I back? I think I was just gone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I think I'm fine now. So uh, that is all from uh, the. Uh, can you please change the slide? Uh, okay. Yes. That was the last slide. So uh, from that, I'm just trying to give the perspective of. Uh, how things are different and how things are similar, but yet uh, technically different from one another. So I think uh, that's all from my side. And, and if somebody have any question, they can ask. ask. Well, Sarah had to step away for just a second. Michelle and Tom, if uh, you want to take care of the post interview here, and we'll get Sarah right back here. Yes, we'd love to. Right, Tom? We're on it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Anila, I was just thinking about what your average day looks like. I was posting in the comments that I think that it's vitally important to educate those within our communities. And I was just thinking... <laughs> Have there been times when you have received pushback when you go to educate in the community? Are people receptive to the things that you're teaching them about autism and neurodivergence? Or is there a little pushback? For children, they are. For children, they are. For adults, they don't get this idea that uh, adults are also, adult also need support. But I think it's it, it, was a, it, it was a very difficult journey for me to uh, tell people people the difference between autism and intellectual disability i think i'm still on that uh, journey so that is not an easy thing to do but i'm still keep on doing that and um, also uh, telling them why it's important to um, you know uh, to have the understanding because you know when we talk about uh, girls for girls it's way 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 more difficult because in our culture uh, let's say in brown and black in both culture and i think some in, to some extent in white culture too if a girl is you know it's a shy smiley girl the girl who is doing a lot of masking you know uh she's a very good and you know uh you can date that girl and uh you know so it's more like that so you know people have this thinking in their mind and it's it's also true for a man too so things are not difficult for boys also but uh it was not easy still you have to i think i have to go a long way to do that but uh, mm -hmm. it's been a journey, yes. But what gave you the confidence to stand up and speak up? Yes, maybe my f my father gave me that confidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is always my answer. Yes, because wow. a confident girl from a girl came from a confident family, which is what I feel, and it's all the support that I have. Uh, because you know, like if I look toward my own journey, I did not know about myself. I just get to know about a few years back, two or three years back. But I'm working and people even I remember uh, this is uh, the question is asked from me by a, by a podcaster that so did you know always I said no not at all that is a plan not a planned journey at all like you could say that it, it, it was a destiny you know like just destiny bring you those things together so uh, it was your calling confidence is, yeah. confidence is coming from hard work actually this is what I believe when you work hard and we, when you know when you can speak up for the reality I am not scared to tell people that the reality about uh, uh, those children have will have issues their whole life. You know, 
like people would, would say that no your child will be going to be very okay we are going to treat or you can we, are, we can cure autism that that is not the reality so mm -hmm. even if uh, i remember if my patient just go my pa uh, the family that i'm working with if they are going I, i have no problem with that they can just go but i will tell them the reality so this was my approach and uh, this, think, this is it is I've yeah added into me too. point um, Michelle, regarding obviously if there's been any pushbacks you've ex experienced in it, I think with that it encourages you when when you are people are saying things that are not right, it motivates us to carry on. And I think if we're not upsetting people, we're not doing it right at the end of the day. So I just think <laughs> you're very brave in terms of an area with this mission, this call, and this journey that you're doing. And I think it's great. And for that, your students or people that you work with, what an amazing person they have, and what an amazing advocate they have to in terms of talk talk back. But that should motivate us more. The people that are not aligning to what we're saying, that just motivates me. I'll just carry on. I'll be louder and louder and louder because I think we are we are young people's voices. And sometimes, if they're if the people that we're trying to talk to that are not listening to us imagine what that's like for the young person when they're trying to say i'm i'm stressed or i'm struggling and just get yeah. on with it and these words just get on with it you will cure autism oh, it just it infuriates me but i use that <laughs> to motivate myself more and carry on but mm -hmm. you're still brave in the end and carry, carry on what you're doing because you're never a great person to have in this world around this topic yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I can, sorry that I um, had to step away for a moment, but let me share why, because it's extremely applicable as what we're doing here today. You know, I'm a stay at home mom to a son who has needs 24 seven. He is 14. But when I hear from the other room, help, I need help wiping. Like that's mom's got to go. Like <laughs> I have to step away. So it just goes to show that, you know, the kind of the tasks that we're um set with in our life like we they take priority and that's kind of where i move from is how can i help this individual have the easiest um you know success in in his life as as possible and what he needs more than anything most of the time is his mom. And so, you know, I, I have to be willing and able to do that. Even in events like this, right? I still got to go wipe a butt. <laughs> Anila, when you introduced yourself, first of all, Sarah, I just want to acknowledge that. That is the darn truth. We are on call all the time when we have kids yeah. that have these needs and um we just find ways we have to step out and we have to support when and when we're called <laughs> but Anita, <laughs> exactly. I, was, I was just i was kind of curious i hope this is okay to ask you mm -hmm. but i i think i am trying to think back to when you introduced yourself and you are an autistic woman was i am i correct and a u b h d both oh both. okay okay I'm an okay so my 16 year old son we in i don't know if it's called this all over the world but in the united states we say audi hd and i'm um, or yeah. it's commonly used i don't know that it's a official term but i was just thinking as as a mother do you have do you have neurodivergent children that you are raising and caring for right now i'm single i'm single you're single so you're caring for the masses is what the i'm world. understanding yes then. yeah right? i'm working um i've been working like uh it's more than a decade now and uh, the moment i just mm -hmm. met them i just uh i have been you know doing a lot of uh you could say that uh, uh babysitting of kids actually in my own family with my own young, younger siblings too but uh, uh i think i have people around me and uh the thing that what i would say is it's all about love actually if somebody would ask me about my family let's say i think it's it's just love it's not other than that because i would not say that they're that much educated about that okay we all are let's say but uh, not about that like i don't need to tell them that i just want a space for myself i want to do that i want to do that because uh, if like you were saying that what give you that courage because you know i told you that i belong to a very to a place in my country which is very uh, Distinctive, you know, if, if you know about Malala, uh, if you know yeah. about her history, so mm -hmm. I belong to the same uh, to, to the same area of my country, mm -hmm. and that is like that. And uh, you know, uh, the point is, uh, 
you have to because you know when you talk because i'm in a profession too and you have to give the you have to take the step because you know if you do that and i know a lot of people who have been maybe autistic and if they tell the to the community people judge it over that i don't care about that so i put my maybe professional role on vulnerability to come forward and do that and i don't care about that because i am working for masses and i am working for a lot of girls a lot, a lot a lot of families actually and it's not just about my own community i'm working for other people too and uh, i think uh, we have been alone for so long let's say and i don't want the people maybe feel that way it's not about you know, people not around you because i have a lot of you know sibling around me but even then you know just feeling lonely that's uh, about sometime and understanding the perspective or understanding the girl's perspective understanding the boy's perspective because uh uh when you are working you don't have a gender you know therapist is a person and mm -hmm. for me autistic individuals are person so let's just deal that with that way and uh, uh if people uh, uh have to you know um, I oh she's coming i can see it lost a lot of maybe years to have that voice so i used to write a lot you know mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. Now I don't write. I speak. I don't like writing anymore. I want, and I have created no values for myself, by the way. And there's something else in, into that which is very always interesting for me. And I was just quoting this to somebody day before yesterday. But I have always been judged the way that I speak. I speak very fast. And um, I was about uh, talking about my work. My speed is a little bit slower. Otherwise, I can you can you know just hundred by hundred. That's my speed. I am always judged over that, and I always feel bad about that. And speaking is the thing that i am like this is my profession too you know like i'm earning from that too so like god give me the same uh, so it it god make it my strength actually so mm. all that mm, love that i'm so proud of you and so honored and grateful that you came to share with us here this morning um it's it's such a valuable work that you're doing um it's I would Tom and I were talking on the side. I'm just gonna say like we're um, uh, we're gonna make sure you get a Nobel Peace Prize somehow, and then we're all gonna be there to watch you receive it. By the way, so <laughs> that's just our plan. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Let me just say into that. Yes, I, I would. I would like that. By the way. <laughs> So just thank you so much for your work in the community. Thank you for being here today. Um, thank you for being my friend on and following each other on Facebook and supporting one another. Uh, and I welcome everybody to follow you on social media and go and, and support you and see the work you're doing and, you know, give you a shout out whenever they can. And Mia says, I love yeah. your story. Right. I follow you on Facebook. She's such an inspiration. Love thank that. you so much and also i would like to i remember when we having the discussion i give you one uh one suggestion i want you to work on that suggestion too i hope you remember that suggestion okay <laughs> you I don't. That suggestion. I don't know. oh my god <laughs> no, no. it was you know yeah. there are a lot of things are going on but i just wanted you to you already have a platform and you have a lot of a lot of artistic voice around you so you can be a person if we have certain issues we can just come together and i think we can give 5 and 10 minutes to one issue too and yeah. a lot of bad things are happening around us and we just have to have a voice we just have to if we want to go to united nation i just don't want you and to to uh, to control your speech which i have seen actually i, I hope mm. they uh, I, I, again i'm not afraid to speak that but i have seen people they were just sitting just like that and their speech was so controlled i just don't want that mm. i just want people to yeah. speak up but they're feeling you know i just don't want them yeah. to act like robot and i don't want them to mask at all when they're talking about I, something when they're talking about themselves yeah i love that well i hope that everyone knows when they come to these kind of events it's it, you're it's a free for all we're all here we're all doing our own thing we're all supporting and loving one another and hopefully nobody feels the need to do that but yeah i think that even as um, new advocates come, it's that n that nerves kind of right before they get comfortable. But then when they find their place and they settle in and they realize we're here just supporting them, you just see like the life come out of them and it gets, yeah. it's so exciting. 
Well, I am just and so you honored, see that, like I said, thank you. I think their eyes actually, you know, it's, it's just like mm -hmm. that. You know, the sparkling. Yes. It's yes, amazing to watch actually. <laughs> I've got dodgy eyes, so you wouldn't see mine. <laughs> Character. I will see what so you <laughs> Our next guest from Lithuania is actually on the backstage right now. So I'm so excited to um, to introduce her as well and just kind of keep this amazing event going, you know. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. Um, I don't want to mispronounce your name. My, you know, <laughs> the love of my son who speaks all languages, 130, he kind of, he came in and he helped me like, he uh, pronounced everybody's name ahead of time. So I, I, wish, I invited him here to invite or to introduce people, but he didn't like that idea. So yeah. <laughs> <Just stayed here. laughs> oh. no, no, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> I know it's all good. Thanks a lot for having me. So like, the pronunciation is Ogna. Um, and then my last name, I usually just ignore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a trouble for everyone. It's a trouble for Lithuanians sometimes. So it's... 